This is the lobby way that enters into most of the main rooms after you come through the Madison Street door. And this was the blue room. This was their main room, but it was a private room. So only the members that were taking the classes, uh, in a sense, which were called degrees, uh, were allowed to go inside. And they would get in by using the door down. And there were things that would be said back and forth that gave them permission then to enter the blue room. Oh, this is the biggest room in Bay City. It's three stories high. This is the blue room. This is their main room. And when it was restored in the, oh, around the 1970s, it was repainted, for, especially the proscenium arch here. The color blue in this building is significant because it's uh, the color of King Solomon's Temple which was where the original Knights Templar were given a location to uh, have as their headquarters uh, way back after the Crusades. So this is the blue room. Uh, right now the stained glass windows have their covers on it because uh, we were using it and keeping the room dark. We show movies in here. We have concerts. Uh, these seats actually were once at Crossroads Village and there was a swap done with their theater, I think where they wanted the wooden seats that were originally here uh, and uh, they were swapped for their seats which were used here. So this uh, building seats about uh, this room of over 300 people and they would have these degrees here. Uh, there's a full stage. Uh, right now the flies are not on it. They've been stored. But there were 29 theatrical hand-painted drops that uh, were on flies up into a full rig th uh, theater and by manipulating those flies, they could uh, pretty much make an astonishing array of effects. And those were parts of the degrees that basically were teaching men ethical, and I'm not a Mason, so I can't speak for the Masons, but uh, I look at it as uh, men wanted to be civilized and uh, do good things in their community and make friends, and that's what this lodge served the purpose as. And so those degrees or classes would be held in this room. And that's why you hear like a 32nd degree Mason. He's had 32nd degrees here. Um, the only ones that were public, I think, were Christmas and a patriotic one around the 4th of July where other family members could attend. But other than that, the degrees were private and meant for the Masons only. And so most of them would be done in this room with these theatrical drops. The, the corresponding building next to us, the consistory, which is the Scottish Rite Masons, this is York Rite in this building, uh, the Scottish Rite would actually have actors on stage to portray the lessons that they wanted to do. Part of the asset of this building is this fabulous organ made by the Felgemacher Company. Felgemacher was a major organ maker in Erie, Pennsylvania, which was a hot spot for making pipe organs. Uh, on the outside here, you see these blue pipes. They're surely decorative. The pipe box there actually has square wooden pipes in it. Uh, these were just decorative but on the front and were originally wood. They were painted later on. Now, I, I, I've got to tell you a funny story. When we first uh, uh, obtained this building, uh, I was very interested in the organ. And uh, so I was searching for who the manufacturer was. And there was a little plastic... Uh, label on the organ console up here and I looked into it and I tried uh, it had a company and I googled it and it was the manufacturer of the little plastic label it was not the manufacturer of the organ but we eventually found a receipt and this was a Felgemacher organ we then tried to find the Felgemacher company found out that over time they had merged with the teller uh, tracker uh, organs and uh, became part of another company but lo and behold, Felgemacher's granddaughter was still alive and in a plastic box under her bed, she had the company records of selling this organ to the Masonic Lodge. Now the organ burned in the fire. Uh, so the question was, was the second organ built specifically for this building or did they buy a used one and move it here? And we have determined that this was original to the second construction it was built for this building. There are actually, they, they bought an option with it, and in the attic, there's a blower that drives the wind. So uh, there's a switch, you turn the blower on. Uh, right now, all kinds of notes sound. So the plan here is we will 
uh, eventually train a group. This has been used at other organs like this. We bring in these experts, we'll disassemble the pipe box because it has a mechanism all under the floor here. The organ console and the pipe box are connected by linkages and some of them are disconnected over the years. We also can't get back to the back of the organ because of, of, of you see it in white there, that wall was put in to kind of uh, differentiate between the seats and the steps and the organ. But right now we can't open up the back of the organ to reconnect it. So uh, that will eventually happen and we'll have volunteers that will rebuild the mechanism. There, Each key, there's maybe eight parts that are felt that uh, seal air off and these will all have to be rebuilt. So the plan is to deconstruct the organ with these experts, bring everything out here on the floor, and volunteers' chain assembly line process will rebuild what happens when you press a key, and that will all be reinstalled, and then this organ will work. Now, another question that came up is, can contemporary instruments tune to the organ and play here? And Leo Najjar, the late Leo Najjar, who was uh, the music maestro, of course, of the Bijou Orchestra here in Bay City, along with other things. Leo said this organ would actually be a civic organ and it would be slightly higher pitch than a traditional instrument. So it's difficult to tune instruments to match this organ, but he said it can be done. And there was music written for a civic organ and a small orchestra like the Bijou, like 13, 16 pieces, uh, and so at some point we hope to have the organ and then uh, have it in a concert with this group of instruments that could be tuned to the organ. But it would be hard to bring in like a, a high, say like a high school band with all their instruments, tune them to match the organ because the organ's going to be kind of sharp compared to their instruments. So uh, the total cost of that deconstruction would be about $5,000. The additional construction back in is about $15,000. If anybody viewing this wants to participate in that, you can contact me and I'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get your name. But uh, that will happen at some time in the future because there's more pressing needs in the building right now.